Dear students, in here we will discuss about the algorithms in the ICT syllabus. So mainly we look at the flowcharts and the pseudocodes, uh, which is not difficult. Uh, we are, I will explain each step one by one. You can easily understand this section because this is one of the very important section because you will get some MCQ questions and again one whole question. Uh, with the python program language therefore to be following the python you should know this one very clearly so in here we are going to discuss initially what is an algorithm what's the purpose of the algorithm why are we developing this algorithm and why are we studying this algorithm what are the applications and then we discuss about two methods of representing the algorithm they are flowchart and pseudocodes and then we'll discuss some control structures we are using in algorithm basically sequence selection and loops so under the loops we'll discuss three type of loops while loop for loop and repeat loops we discuss how we can implement these loops in pseudocode and the flowchart then we discuss uh, one shorting algorithm according to syllabus is a bubble short algorithm and then discuss the sequence of the search algorithm as a one search algorithm stay in the syllabus then finally we'll discuss the past papers related to this uh, algorithms and explain the answers now initially we want to know what is an algorithm as you know when you are discussing the systems now these algorithms are developed when you are going to develop systems as a software engineer or programmer when you are going to develop the systems uh, we need to develop the algorithms now we have learned a system what is a system system is collection of subsystems where yeah, there are some sub components which uh, they are working for some specific tasks so all a system has a collection of subsystems which are working together to develop to complete a specific tasks in the systems mainly there are three components we have discussed previously what are the three components in the systems input process and outputs so inputs are the one which will input maybe some numbers some materials are the inputs and this process is the one which will convert these inputs into the outputs the outputs are the results that you will get after process now this process what is the process now this process is the one which will convert the inputs into the outputs to do that one here there are set of steps you have these steps now this process remember are the one which will convert the input in the outputs so here there are some steps those steps what we call the algorithms once you follow these steps in the algorithm what happened this will be converted into outputs so when the problems are going to be developed we need to identify the main components and sub components and each component should identify the inputs and outputs and the process this process is the one which will be converted into as an algorithm so that describe the steps to convert the input into outputs so if you take a very simple example making a t now you can see making a t we have some inputs what are the inputs the sugar water tea and what's the output we want? We want to have a cup of tea. <coughs> then to make a tea, there are some steps. So this is what we call the process. Now for this process is the one which will convert input into output. That means these materials will be converted into a tea. So to make that conversion, here there is a process. Now basically process means set of steps. We need to follow some steps in order. Remember this order is very important. We need to follow the order. So this is the order given. So you can see to make a tea, what you have to do, first you have to boil the water, put the tea in the bottom of the cup, add the hot water like the steps are defined. Now you can see this is the process. So this process we describe by steps. Then this is what we call the algorithm. Once you follow this algorithm, you will get the desired outputs. So then basically you can understand what is an algorithm algorithm define a sequence of steps you need to complete this step in order and once you complete these steps you will get the desired outputs so in very simply algorithm define the required steps in order once you follow the that steps in the order you will get the desired outputs 
now this is another example uh, for the algorithm let's say we want to get the sum of the two numbers in that case inputs are the two numbers that you want to input output is the sum then what are the steps first we input the numbers and get the total and display now these are the steps in the process now these is steps in the process what we call we call as an algorithm so that will convert the inputs into the desired output so in general we can define algorithm is the one which has a set of precise instructions and that should be completed to get the solve the problem or to get the desired outputs so remembering the algorithm order or the sequence is very important we have to follow the work in the given order that order or the sequence is very important in the algorithm <coughs> now this is another algorithm for the sorting this is how we call the sorting algorithm because uh, we sort the numbers in ascending order now here we have set of numbers random selected numbers but i want to convert them into an ascending order now to make that one we can use sorting algorithm now this is one example of the sorting algorithm here there are three steps what is the first step get the smallest number from the input now the smallest number is one take that one and remove that one remove that one and place in the other side so place in the other side then repeat the steps one and two go back to the next is smallest two remove that one place that one here so like you can see this is a very simple algorithm which describe the steps to convert the input numbers into outputs where the numbers will be in ascending order so this is an example for sorting algorithm <laughs> and why are we studying this algorithm remember we need to learn this algorithm because all the software that you are running in your computer they all have different algorithms if you take the operating system they have memory management algorithm, CPU scheduling algorithm, file management algorithms, they are available. We need to the data communication networks, routing algorithm, encryption algorithm, decryption algorithms, and the search engine. Now you know this Google is a popular search engine. That is because of its ranking algorithm and searching algorithms. And all the computer games are working with some algorithm. Taste recognition algorithm, voice recognition algorithm, think of thing identification algorithms sorting algorithms like there are a lot of algorithms remember all the applications that you are working with today they have at least one algorithm therefore learning this subject is very very important then uh, basically we need to learn this algorithm the reason is this now when the large problems are solving now we have learned previously system uh, development life cycle under that once you identify the problem once you collect the requirements so once you identify all the requirements you have to analyze these requirements and once you analyze the requirements you identify what are the components sub components how they are interconnected once you analyze the requirements the next thing is you have to develop the algorithms you have to develop the algorithm and then you have to test this algorithm because same problem remember one problem there can be many algorithms not only one several algorithms will be available for the one problem then we need to find out the best solution and that best solution let's say you identify this one is the best solution then what do you do only that one will be coded not the others therefore once the problem is analyzed we have to develop the algorithm and then there can be different algorithm for the same problem they have to find out the best algorithm the best algorithm is the one which is going to be implemented and why do you do this algorithm development reason is now as you know when the large buildings are going to be developed what do they do they create a model using cardboards or some other uh, simulation tools will be used and then they will show it to the customer and check whether the customer is satisfied then only we do the actual implementation because otherwise if you just develop a very large building what happened if something is wrong changing is difficult and you are losing the money so similarly when the last software are going to develop first you develop the algorithm and then find out this, this algorithm is a good one and once you analyze and identify the good one then only we developed or code so that is why we need to do the algorithm designing when the large systems are going to be developed 
to identify the best algorithm then how do you represent the algorithms remember to represent the algorithm mainly there are two methods what are the two methods flow chart and the solo codes these are the two techniques that are using to develop the algorithm so that is when the problem is identified we solve that problem by developing the algorithms so in the algorithm we have the steps now these steps must be converted into some format where the other people can understand then you have to convert this to the program code then only program code will be implemented and run as a system so these are the two techniques we are using to represent the algorithm that is pseudo code and the flow chart why are we using these two techniques remember these two techniques are very easy and very convenient and everybody can read and understand because when the algorithm is developed uh, the others everyone should be able to read and understand in the pseudo code and flow chart they don't have any complex rule or syntax therefore anybody can read and understand and easy to modify so that's the main reason why are we using these two techniques so if somebody asks what are the advantages of flow chart and pseudo codes we can explain that in flow chart is a kind of graphical representation we are people can understand easily because as you know the graphics or image will give you thousands of information then you are writing paragraphs so this one when somebody see he can understand how this algorithm is working this is the one of the very easy way to explain the your algorithm so in this one we have set of symbols that you should familiar with and then there are a few symbols once you know that one very easily you can develop the algorithm so now these are the symbols in the flow chart you should know these things to develop the algorithm now initially we have this process process means some calculation when you are doing some calculation we need to use a square or what we call a rectangle so that will indicate some calculation some processing parts and all the inputs outputs should be written by parallelogram this symbol is used for the inputs and outputs this is basically used for the decision making now later we will discuss the selection and the loops for the selection and the loops to make a decision to do something or not to do something for that one decision making is done by the symbol called as a uh, parallelogram sorry uh, the diamond shape is used and this one is connector if the diagram is going very large you can connect the flow chart with one part or another part now this is the one which will be used to start and the end of the uh, algorithm so arrows are used to make the direction to which direction data is moving instructions are moving that is represented by uh, this arrows so main advantage of this flow chart is which is very easy to read and understand non technical people can understand and easy to convert in the program code and easy to can make the changes and logical reasoning can be done more clear and easy to understand problem is it takes more time to draw this one and there are some different uh, tools but these tools are very expensive to draw the flow charts those are the disadvantages of the flow chart then another one is pseudo codes now in addition to flow chart is a pseudo code pseudo code mean we are just writing the simple english language to write these steps why we use a pseudo codes because pseudo code doesn't have any rules then once you just write the algorithm it steps by just english language anybody can read and anybody can understand they are for uh, easy to make the changes and nothing will be losing just like you are building a building using the cardboard nothing will be lost if there is a problem similarly when you develop the pseudo code algorithm by pseudo codes we are not spending a lot of time if there is a modification you can modify we are not losing anything the pseudo code is the one which is very easy for the other people to read and understand and again is to modify that is why we use the pseudo codes <coughs> now this is very simple example just to explain uh, pseudo code and the flow chart now let's say we want to calculate the area of the rectangle for this one we are asked to draw the flow chart and the pseudo code now the flow chart is this way start first you have to get the length and the width of the rectangle 
and then calculate the area just by multiplying those two and then output the area and out finished so this is these are the steps of the algorithm which we need to follow to get the area of the rectangle same thing you can write by algorithm uh, by pseudocodes the begin we have to start input the value length and the width calculate the area and output end so this is begin is represented by the symbol end is represented by the symbol and inputs are parallelograms outputs are parallelogram sorry outputs are parallelogram this is a calculation so calculation is a rectangle process so that is how you can draw the flow chart and the solar codes for the given question it's not difficult if you can understand only thing you just familiar with these uh, symbols then the control structures now remember in algorithm these are the very important parts control structures most of the complex algorithms are developed using this control structures so this control structures are there are three sequence selection iteration now remember all the algorithm has this sequence every algorithm this must be there but these two may be available may not be available we can't say exactly that it is there but every algorithm which should be there sequence must be there sequence means the step the order we have to run the program algorithm in order the in a sequence the sequence is normally represented by this arrow sequence is represented by this arrow so then remember this arrow is the one which represents the sequence of the algorithm so every algorithm we have a sequence but the selection and iteration of the loops may be available may not be available now the selection is if the selection is there remember or if the iteration is there this symbol must be available if this symbol is a dimension is available that means whether there is maybe there is a selection maybe there is iteration then how do i identify whether which one is there so if there is selection then you can see there is a I, the, this loop this kind of diamond shape and there are two path true false yes no if it is true you get a one path if it is false you get another path and then go to the end so that's the selection but if there's a loop then again the same simply is available if it is true it goes in a one path but remember if it is a loop it will come back it will come back to the condition if it is coming back to the condition then you should understand it's a loop iteration so this is a loop or iteration if it is false exit so that is how you identify the loop or con selection by using this symbol so this one is a selection this one is iteration loops now we'll discuss little bit about these three in more detail now sequence as i mentioned earlier every algorithm has a sequence that is represented by this arrow so then here the sequence is from beginning to end in this order this is sequence so every algorithm there must be sequence because order is very important in the algorithm but selection may be there may not be there selection you can see now if you take a junction you need to have a selection that is you are either you are going to straight in this path or whether you take a turn this direction so there is a decision making so based on your requirement you have to make a decision so decision making is represented by this notation this notation if it is true one path if it is false another path here based on a requirement either you go this direction or you go to this direction that decision you have to take and then how do you write this one when you are writing this uh, selection you have to use the word if and this condition this condition and you have to use the word then if the condition is true this will be executed else else mean condition is false this part if the condition is false if this condition is false then you execute this one and you have to say if condition is finished this is how you write it now we'll take some example then you can understand this in more detail we'll take very simple example now here we are given a flow chart we input the age 
and if the age is greater than 55 if it is yes you can say you are retired if it is not less than if it is not greater than 55 you just say keep working and then finished then how do you draw the corresponding pseudo code for this begin this one start read the age read the age because it's input operation now this is a condition condition is this one so that's a condition here if age greater than 55 then you can see this one is used to represent this notation when you have this notation that is if because it's a just no selection if it is yes you have to say the retired else means condition is false you have to say keep working and if condition must be terminated and end and the other things when you are writing this pseudo code remember this indentation like you have to change shift like this this is needed why because that will make very clear you have written the everything clear now you can see if we started else part end if program is started program ended now you can see everything is clear you can identify with the everything is clearly open and clearly closed therefore when you are writing this program this indentation is very important you have to shift the lines like this to make the program more clear this is another example just to calculate the when the number is input you decide this number is odd number or even number this is there in your textbook so once a number is input now here you input the number and you check this number is even how do you do that on you divide by two this mod operation means divide by two get the remainder when the number divide by two remainder is given by this mod operation now if we input the number let's say n equals five then what do you do we divide the five by two we know when the 5 divided by 2 you can't divide exactly one is remaining so this remainder is given by r remainder so if the r is equal to 0 that means even number that means no remainder if the r is not equal to 0 that means it is a odd number so from that you can decide whether the input number is even number or odd number so then how do you write the corresponding pseudo code so to input the number calculate the mod and the selection if this is that if it is yes even number if it is not odd number and you can see if condition is closed and the program is closed so that is how you write the pseudo code for the given flow chart and this is a little bit complex one this is what you call nested loop selection that means there is a selection inside the selection so that's the nested selection now in here uh, we need to enter the three numbers a b c and first we check whether a is greater than b if the a is greater than b if it is true what do you do if the a is greater than b we check whether a is greater than c so basically this algorithm is given to compare three numbers and find the largest first you compare a and b if the a is larger than b that means a is largest then you compare a and c in that case if the a is larger than c that means a is larger than both b and c that means a is the largest if this condition falls that means c is the largest because a is already b greater than b but if this condition falls that means who is the largest b then you compare b with c in that case if the b is larger than c that means what b is largest l c is largest so then how do you convert this into the pseudo code now you take each line enter this three numbers get the three numbers and first selection first selection is this one a greater than b so that is done here a greater than b if it is true you go to another condition if it is true you can see we need to go to the next condition if it is true if that is true you have to say a is the largest else you have to say c is the largest and this else part now this if condition called closed if started else end if now for this is if condition that means this one for this one there is else part that is this one under the else part you have to check whether b greater than c so that is done here b greater than c if 
the b is greater than c if that condition is true we have to say b is largest else c is largest and finish now this if condition closed so this if condition is started to in else part and if now this if condition is closed and the program is closed that is how you should try the program in the nested selection now this is again more complex one uh, when the marks are input if the marks are greater than 75 you have to say a if the marks are between 50 and 75 you have to say b if the marks are between 35 and 49 you have to say c in this one remember uh, for this kind of places there's a range there's a range now this can be done with the switch also we'll discuss the switch under the uh, when you're discussing the programming languages now here when the marks are greater than 75 to say a if the marks in a given in a range now how do you do that one because there's a range here remember this can be done very easily using the uh, if condition with the nested selection this can be done easily see the answer then you can understand how you can describe this range so here this is how you write the answer now we have to input the mark we have to check with the marks are greater than 75 if the marks are greater by greater than 75 you have to say a because if the marks are greater than or equal 75 means the grade is a then else else means what's the meaning of the else now here else means now here this is marks are greater than 75 when you say else that automatically determine marks are less than 75 so then you check whether when the marks are less than 75 whether it is greater than 50 so in that case you can see this describe the 74 and 50 range why here we just say else else means less than 75 that means 74 but here you check with this greater than 50 that means this range is described so in that case if the marks are between this range you have to say b then you have to say else when you say else then you know marks are not greater than or equal 50 that means less than so in that case we know marks are 49 less than or equal 50 means 49 and we check with it's greater than 35 then automatically that's a range of 49 and 30 35 so when you say else then determine marks are less than 50 and here you say greater than 35 that means in this range grade is c now here when you say else you know marks are not greater than equal 35 that means less in that case f so very easily you can develop the algorithm for this kind of questions okay then we'll come to the uh, repetitions or what we call the loops now the repetition or basically loops are used to when you are doing the same thing again and again so you can see these are repetitions like this it's a loop so if you do the same thing again and again until some conditions are satisfied which is called the loop here also this symbol is used to determine how many times you are running this and this is a condition the diamond shape is a condition but it is rotating you can see it comes back to the same thing so it's a loop like this so when until some conditions are satisfied it runs like this when the condition is satisfied you will exit so that is what we call the loops this is very important in the software development when you are going to do several things repeatedly why we use the loops what are the advantages so there are two advantages mainly because of the loops one thing is it will reduce the program size how does it reduce the program size now here i have an example let's say i want to print the numbers 1 to 100 like 1 2 3 like up to 100 now if you are going to use a write statement to this one you have to write this one write 1 write 2 write 3 out write 100 then how many times you write 100 times you write the right statements 100 times if you are going to print the 1 to 1000 we have to write use this right statement 1000 times so in that case you can see same thing is repeating your program is very lengthy and very large but this can be done using a loop very easily you can just say the condition how many times let's say i less than or equal 
hundred. We can have the variable i. You can see i less than or equal hundred. Initially i equals to one. Then this loop, this will there here you can write the right statement. And then this loop is running how many times? Hundred times. The same thing you can get very easily. If you want to make this run run thousand times, you just add a zero here. Then this will run thousand times. No need to write the code again and again thousand times. So updation is very easy. If you want to run this on ten thousand times, you just add a zero here. That's all. Then this will run the ten thousand times. Therefore, updation modifications are very easy, and program size will be reduced. So that is advantages of loops. So under loops, we are going to discuss three loops: for loop, while loop, repeat loops. Now remember, this for loop and the while loop always flowcharts are equal. Flowcharts are same. They are, but the pseudo codes are different. But in general, uh, the current the flow chart for the for loop and the while loop will be same. There is a condition. If the condition is true, we execute the things and come back. If the condition is true, you come back. If it is false, exit. This is the uh, for loop and while loop flow chart. But repeat loop flow chart is different. What's the difference? They are you test the condition if the condition true we execute here you can see if the condition is true we run and here condition is tested at the beginning before we start the program code we test it and if it is true only runs but here there is no such testing your condition is tested at the bottom that means at least this will be executed once then you will check whether the condition is true or false but here if the condition is false never execute here, yeah, if the condition false, never execute. But even the condition true or false, at least one time this program code will be executed, and then check the condition. So the one difference is here conditions tested at the beginning, here condition tested at the bottom. The other difference is if the condition true, we continue. If the condition true, we continue. But here, if the condition false, we continue. Not true. Remember, when the condition is false, we run it. When it is true, exit. Yeah, when it is false we exit so that's how the difference between for loop while loop and the repeat loop so basically the difference between the repeat loops and the these two loops these two loops are similar this one is different okay then we'll take each loop and see how they are working so initially we start the while loop so while loop is one which can be used in many programming uh, to solve the problems in general uh, syntax is you have to have the initial value to initialize the while loop and the condition when you are writing we write the word while and the condition so if the condition true executes so if the condition true it executes and come back but whenever condition is false exit if the condition false it execute and continue so we'll take the example and then see now let's see how this simple example works now in this example uh, we have while loop uh, initial i equals to if the i is less than six this is a condition if the i is less than six we run it and print i plus one and then i is increment by two then here i is increment by two and then come back this will be continue until while the i is less than equal 6 so then you can see first line is just mapped here is the condition just mapped here if the condition is true we have to do this too and the other one if it is 6 finish exit so if the condition is true do this one and come back to the loop if this is running if the condition is false exit go to the end this is how it works now let's see how to get the output now initially i equals 2 we check whether i is less than 6 yes 2 is less than 6 true then print i plus 1 i is how much 2 i is 2 then print 2 plus 1 2 plus 1 is 3 it prints 3 but remember i is not changing i is still 2 here we just increment and display 
2 plus 1 3 then the print 3 output is 3 but the value of the i is still 2 then i is synchronized by 2 current is the current value of the i current value of the i is 2 2 plus 2 is 4 otherwise you may confuse this one this is only incrementation only for printing not the value of the i is incremented value of the i is incremented here i is initial 2 then i is single by 2 then it becomes 4 then i is 4 then you come here is the 4 less than 6 yes then print 4 plus 1 that means 5 print 5 i is still 4 and then increment by 2 then 4 plus 2 how much 6 then i become 6 then 6 less than equal 6 this condition is true print 6 plus 1 7 so output is 7 then increment by 2 6 plus 2 is 8 and get the 8 is the 8 less than 6 no condition is false exit this is the output you get this is how you get the output for the while loop then the for loop now remember the for loop while loop flow chart is same but the pseudocode is different pseudocode we just write while and condition while condition is true we execute it but in the for loop we just write the starting value and the last value but no conditions available if there is no condition in the while loop we write the condition this condition but remember here we don't write the condition we just see the starting and the end in that case we are not converting because uh, we are not converting this for loop uh, flow pseudocode in the flow chart you have to take the starting value i equals 1 starting value should be placed here starting value should be placed here what is the condition i goes from 1 to 10 so the last value is this one condition is this i less than or equal to 10 this is the condition now this condition is not given here so you have to get the condition i less than or equal to 10 this should be placed here at this point condition condition is coming from this last value and this is the body of the loop that will just go there the body of the loop and here you can see there is no incrementation if you look at the while loop there is an incrementation the variable i equal i plus 2 so such incrementation is not there so here you should know i go from 1 to 10 increment by 1 so that updation should be added to the end of the while loop a for loop each the body is executed this updation must be done that is i equal i plus 1 incrementation that should be added to here so then you have to be careful when you are converting the pseudocode of the for loop to into the flow chart. You have to have the starting value that should be initialized here. Condition should be identified here. And the loop incrementation that should go here. This is another two example. So this will go from row i equals 1 to 10. And output i. So the output will be 1 to 10. And the same thing but i equals 10 to 1 down to down to means reduced by 1 then 10 to 1 that is 10 9 8 to 1. so this is the output you get so this for loop is working in simple way but you know converting to the flow chart you have to be careful then the last one is a repeat loop now the repeat loop as i mentioned earlier this is much more different with compared to the for loop and the while loop so what are the differences here the condition is tested at the bottom but in the for loop while loop you should say the condition is tested at the beginning if the condition true we continue but here we check the condition at the end that means the code body will be executed at least once then only you check the condition and the other difference is if the condition false continue if the condition true exit but for loop while loop it is the other way if the condition true continue condition false exit but here it's a totally reverse now these two loops normally available in these two languages pascal and basic language but most of the language is not available now in here when you are writing in the flow chart to look like this how do you write the syntax you use the word repeat repeat this should be p repeat and the condition until here is the condition this is the condition you have to draw right here this is the condition we should get here but here just write the repeat word to indicate the repetition to indicate the starting point
and condition will come to the bottom so this is another example where you get infinite loops infinite loop means a loop which is running independently without stopping as an example if you take the servers the servers are running in every 24 hours 365 days always running to develop the server these infinite loops are needed and there can be some applications we are always running if you take the traffic light systems which is always running the cycle so in that case they are running all the time that is again uh, infinite loop if you take the atm machine atm machine always running once you input the card it exit that means service always running so in that case we need to use uh, infinite loops a loop which is running continuously without stopping this is an example where you get the infinite loop the, here the count is one and the condition is count is equal to zero then you can see count is one means one is equal to zero no this one equals zero. then the count is increment by one then the count will be two is a two equal to zero no is a three equal to zero no that means this is an infinite loop this loop runs continuously without stopping so in a while loop if you make the condition true all this you get an infinite loop then the other part that you should know uh, sometimes this selection and the loops can be integrated so this is a uh, one example to calculate the factorial value uh, the selection and the loops are integrated now you can see here there are two conditions this is a one condition and this is another condition now when you see this condition we know these conditions are used in the selection or in the loop then you need to identify which one is which so here you can see if it is yes one part if it is no another part and that means no repetition this is a selection but this one if it is yes you can see it goes like this and come back so it goes like this and come back then you should understand this is a loop therefore this you can try it using a while loop easily so then first line is read the value set this one and this one is a selection if if the n is equal to zero then you have to, if it is true just set this fact else means no part else means this part if it is no else part under that you have a loop if it is no you have run the loop while and we have run these two lines that is these two lines and end the loop and if condition is started else part if condition should be finished when the both are all are finished to print print is done here that is how you convert this into the uh, flow chart into the pseudo code when they are the selection with the loop and this is another one loop and selection so here they are is a loop and again a selection now again you can see there is a diamond shape and there is a diamond shape now you need to identify which one is a loop which one is a selection you can see this one is goes back and come here that's a loop but this one if it is just this no this that's a selection therefore you can easily map uh, read the value set these values this is a loop while while this is true we had run this like this and loop is over and loop is over here then this is selection if if it is true this one if it is false this one that is over and then finished then easily you can convert into the pseudo code so in the ICT level syllabus we have a one shorting algorithm called as a bubble short which is a very simple algorithm it will just swap the adjacent values if they are in, not in the correct order and this will be done repeatedly until from the beginning to end of the array with several passes now you can see the first time what you do if you are given array like this now we want to sort these numbers in ascending order so what it does it take the first two numbers in the first round we just take the first two numbers and check with the they are in the wrong order if they are not in the correct order just swap then this 5 is larger than 1 therefore these two will be swapped then you get like this and then it is the next two number 5 and 4 so then you can see when you do the 5 and 4 4 5 is large 4 is small therefore it will be swapped 
then you take the next two numbers 5 and 2 you need the 5 and 2 5 and 2 is in the upper not in the correct order therefore these two will be swapped then you can take these two number 5 and 8 you can see 5 and 8 is already sorted no swapping so that is the first round the second round again will start this number first two numbers then you can see first two numbers again in order we don't need to change then these two not in the correct order now these two have to swapped they have already swapped then these two you can see already in the order no need to swap these two then you can see already sorted no need to swap so then again next round will start from the beginning <coughs> so no swapping when you take these two no need to swap when you take these two no need to swap when you take these two no need to swap so like it will go in different rounds until from the beginning to end so then the array will be sorted at the end so then let's see the steps in the algorithm so this is the algorithm given so we pass the array the array algorithm name is a bubble short this a means is array name a means is array name and first we calculate the length now here the length is one two three four five so n is equal to five that is the array length that is equal to 5 we calculate that mm -hmm. then the loop will go from 3 to 10 minus 1 that means 0 to 4 why does it go from 0 to 4 because if you take the starting index 0 and then 1 and then 2 and then 3 and then 4 therefore you have to go from 0 to 4 that is why this loop go from 0 to 4 and then j equals 1 to n minus 1 n minus 1 means again 4 that means 1 to 4 so what it does why it start from 1 to 4 what it does it will just check whether a j minus 1 j is 1 that means j minus 1 is 0 a 0 is compared with a 1 basically we compare these two we compare these two if once you compare these two if this number is large 0 1 is large first one is small in that case is up but here you can see these two are this one is not larger than this nothing will be swapped then j is increment then j becomes 1 then you get j minus 1 and here j minus 1 means j is next one is 2 2 minus 1 is 1 and 2 then you compare these two 1 and 2 so see index number 1 and 2 and when you compare that you can see this one is large this one is small they are both swap then swap then take the next two number then you can see it will be swapped and next two number nothing to swap this is the first round that means when the i equals zero then you start from the i equal one <coughs> then again you compare these two numbers like this will continue four times then the array will be shorted that is we call as a bubble short algorithm then in the syllabus you have a searching algorithm one searching algorithm we have is a sequential search but there are different searching algorithm in the syllabus you are given sequential search sequential search means we have a list or an array we want to find out a specific number is there let's say we want to find a number 62 is available so then what do you do we take that number and compare the first number we check whether 62 equal to 4 no then you go to the next number then you compare 62 and 25 that is also not equal then you compare with the third number then also not equal then you compare next number then also not equal then you compare the next number then you can see it is equal then we found the results so that is what we call the sequential search we go from beginning to the required locations sequentially one by one then you found the answers there then we return the index number of the location is 5 so if it is not there it will search until to the last one then it says element is not there so that is a very simple algorithm called as sequential search <coughs> we then discuss some uh, past paper question because this 2018 and 19 they have given a little bit interesting questions I have to carefully understand do it so that is I have just selected those two questions because we have to think and do this work now here uh, 
you have given an algorithm and asked to check whether the following statements are correct so now first it says it takes 10 inputs now we want to validate whether it is taking 10 inputs how to decide it you can see here we have two variables i and results so in here what you can do is you can create a very small table to get the idea of this question this kind of question so here i is a one variable result is another variable n is another variable and again output you can write so then you can see number of times the loop is running will be decided by which one this condition this condition is the one which terminates the program therefore this is the one which decide how many times your program is going to be executed now here i equals 1 and it goes up to less than or equal 10 then you can see i equals 1 to when you put the i equals 1 condition is true when the i equals 2 condition is true now here you can see i equals 1 i also incremented by 1 so it goes like this when the i equals 10 you can see 10 is less than or equal to 10 condition is true that means rotate but when the i equals 11 you can see when the condition is false exit that means this loop is running for i equals 1 to 10 so that means it takes i equals 1 the first number 2 is the second number input like it takes a 10 input that's correct that is correct then it says that it computes the sum of the even numbers in the input now let's see so what it does now we input a number when the number is input what do you do we calculate the remainder this is the python operator which will give the remainder n divided by 2 equals 0 this is a remainder so if it is equal to 0 we know it is a even number if it is not equal to 0 that means odd number so here if it is equal to 0 you don't do anything but if it is an equal to not equal to 0 that means no you do the addition of that number to results therefore here if the n divided by 2 equals 0 means even number this one is even and this part is odd number so it computes some of the even numbers wrong because it computes some of the odd numbers here we do the addition of odd numbers because when this condition is false we run it therefore second one is wrong then the third one to take 100 inputs only modifying i less than or equal 10 will be sufficient so if you want to run this one 100 times you have just put the 100 here so that's correct therefore answer is a and b answer is a and b <coughs> then we need to do the calculation to get the output so initially input we start i equal 1 result equal 0 input value input value is 2 then 2 divided by 2 equals 0 yes nothing is done then i will be incremented take the next i value i is less than equal 10 then take the next value then the next value is 8 then 8 divided by 2 0 yes that's correct nothing will happen i will be incremented 3 then get the next value next value is which one 3 9 when you put the 9 9 divided by 2 now that is not equal to 0 then we add the 9 to the results therefore results will be updated by 9 plus 9 number is 9 here so result is 0 0 plus 9 is 9 so like uh, this will continue but remember this will do the addition of the odd numbers but remember it reads up to 10 numbers first number second number third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth ninth ten remember these two will not be considered therefore it add the odd numbers of 9 plus 3 12 12 plus uh, 5 17 17 plus 13 is 30 30 plus 19 is 49 so the final answer results will be 49 because we add up to 10 numbers but here they have given more than 10 so to be careful <coughs> okay, then the 2019 also they have given similar kind of question both in the mcq and again the SA type. <coughs> 
in this question you're asking what would be the output if the first input was 6 and the next inputs were 3, 4, 3, 6, 4, 2, 11, 9. Now let's see how we do. Initially you can create a table like this. Input 10, n is we have given as n is 6 and a <coughs> initially a is 0 and input we check the condition uh, whether it is less than equal 0 n is how much 6 6 less than 0 no yes it is correct then input x x is how much first will be 3 then what you do we check whether 3 divided by 2 3 divided by 2 is equal to 0 now 3 divided by 2 is equal to 0 no so nothing will happen then n is recommended then n becomes 5 and then go back we check with the file is then so yes input the next value next value is which one 6 then 6 divided by 0 yes then what happened uh, it increase the value of a a will be increment to how much a is how much 0 0 plus 1 is 1 then a becomes 1 then n is decreased by 1 and it becomes 4 then you go back you check 4 less than 6 yes then input the x next input value is which one 4 next input value is 4 uh, 4 less than 2 yes then increment the value of a then it becomes 2 and n is decreased by 1 and becomes 3 then we check the 3 less than 0 yes no c is not less than 0 no <coughs> input the x Next value is 2. <coughs> 2 divided by 6, yes. 3. Then n is reduced by 1, 2. n becomes 2. Then go and check. 2 less than 0, yes. <coughs> input how much? Next input is 11. We check with 11 divided by 2. Not It is not 0, no n is taken by 1 then it becomes 1 take the next input next input is 9 9 by by 2 nothing so answer will be 0 so then what would be the output output will be 3 what is the purpose of this algorithm this algorithm purpose is to read 6 numbers and check whether that number is even number we check the number is even number if it is even number even number will be recorded count will be recorded so this will count how many even numbers are there. So in the inputs, how many even numbers? 1, 2, 3. So just calculate the number of even numbers. <coughs> then uh, it is 19. Now this uh, implement the Python will do after completing the Python. Uh, next one is MCU question. You ask me which of the following statement is correct about the algorithm expressed by the flowchart. <coughs> now initially it says it takes 8 inputs. Okay, let's see. Now here uh, initially i equals 8. Sorry, this should be i. i equals 8 and result initially 1. Input 10. Uh, here we need to input some value then you have to decide how many times this loop is running that decision is taken by this condition this condition is one who decide how many times loop is running based on that you can decide how many inputs it takes i equals 8 then you can see i is reduced by 1 you need to carefully look at this one because if it is not reduced by 1 the number of steps are different they have to check whether it is increment by 1 or decrement by 1 or increment by 2 like you can identify that then you can see i is reduced by 1 8 7 6 like that in case if it is reduced by 2 then it becomes 6 8 6 4 like that then the number of times is running will be different so we have to be careful and look at this one also to decide how many times it is not running only this one is not enough this will just say at what time this terminating this will just say how it is incremented or decremented <coughs> now i is 8 is reduced by 1 8 7 6 5 like that then you can see this condition is true when the i equals 8 8 less than 0 no 7 less than 0 no like you can see 2 less than 0 no 1 less than 0 no 
0 less than equal to 0 yes that means this program is running from here to there that means 8 to 1 8 to 1 means it runs 8 times so this is correct then it outputs a product of the positive numbers in the input so here we check whether the number is negative if the number is negative whatever less than 0 we don't do anything if the number is positive we multiply that number and record in this variable called as a result so remember if this is initialized to 0 this answer will be 0 that is why it's initialized to 1 then 1 into that number that means multiply that so it outputs the product of the positive numbers of the input yes it multiply the positive numbers yes that's correct because we check if it is negative negatives we don't do anything so therefore then it if every input is zero then the output will be zero so if the every input is zero that means if the n is zero what happened if the n is zero you check all the zero here zero less than equal zero zero less than equal zero means yes then what happened this will be running uh, it doesn't change the result therefore result value is how much one so finally output will be one so therefore this one is wrong so the answer is a and b so then you can take each input and this will be running only for how many numbers remember it runs only for eight numbers one two three four five six seven eight remember this will not be taken as input then you just multiply the even numbers 3 into 2 6 you can trace this table then you get this output 3 into 2 6 6 into 4 24 24 into 5 120 so the answer is 120 so easily you can calculate the answer so here we have discussed introduction to an algorithm how algorithms are representing three control structures three repetition and loops bubble short and sequencer short and some pass with the discussions okay next i am planning to do the html CSS, and php lessons and then i am planning to do the python so this is one of the very important lesson the python so you can just regularly visit to this website and get the corresponding lessons <coughs> So to create the WhatsApp group, please send me your name, class ID, class and the grade to this number. Okay, thank you for listening. We'll upload the other material to the web, uh, my site. Just go to this site and regularly get the updates. Thank you for listening. Good luck.